this is John for MTG Nexus with starting off with a bit of a meme this morning so a lot of gen players a lot of people going oh my gen decks finally good and modern yay as many of you may know there was a huge amount of bannings in modern yesterday um, two bolts trickery feel of the dead mystic sanctuary uro and Changed the Cascade Rule, and Simeon Spirit Guy were all banned yesterday. So, yesterday on Twitter, all you saw is people lamenting their decks dying, um, you know, talking about what the next great deck's going to be, etc. And two things that kept popping up um, among a lot of people before anybody even played a game of Magic was, Jun's going to be good, and Burn's going to be great. So... Many people think Jund is a meme. Um, you know, it's always an okay deck, never a great deck, never a good deck. So, where do people get the idea that Jund is a great deck? Well, the original deck that put uh, Jund kind of on the map was... This deck right here. This deck right here is outside of the Gilded Gooses, which I'm kind of floating around because I'm playing that as a change of pace today. Was Yuya Watanabe's second place deck at Pro Tour Return to Ravnica um, in Modern. Now, this was a Modern before the Allied Fetch Lands were printed. This was a Modern before Splinter Twin was banned. This was a Modern before. A lot of the stuff that we know and love about modern or hate about modern kind of was a thing. Um, this was one of the pro tours that led to the banning of two cards in John, both Blood Raid Elf and Death Raid Shaman. Um, this was before the printing of Fatal Push. This was the printing before Running Six, Season Pyromancer, Croxa. A lot of stuff that people already consider kind of uh, st um, stalwarts of John these days. So Death Raid Shaman is a powerful hybrid one drop that basically is a mana dork and also a win condition in some regards. It gains you life, it gains you and kill your opponents through uh, draining them out of cards in the graveyard and enabled such busted things as turn two Liliana the Veil, turn three Bloodbraid Elf, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, Made the deck a turn faster, a turn stronger, and helped overcome four copies of Dark Confidant being played alongside Bloodbraid Elf and Olivia Voldaren and such in the sideboard. Overall, very powerful card, banned in Modern, banned in Legacy. Um, this was Jun in its heyday, when Jun was a Tier 1 deck. And I think the only thing that beat Yuya off... For the title was um, Stanislav Sifka, who I don't even know if he plays Magic anymore. Uh, played Eggs, which is basically KCI on crack. Um, he sat there and played a bunch of bobbles, played a bunch of bobbles. Got him back with either Second Sunrise or I forget what the other card was at the time. Played some bobbles, played some bobbles, played some bobbles. Second Sunrise, played some bobbles, played some bobbles, played some bobbles. Second Sunrise, and then I believe you Pyrite Spell Bombed your opponent to death through each of these loops. And then there was one that allowed you to put Second Sunrise either back on top of your deck or back in your hand or something, and just kind of went stupid from there. And it was just a 15-minute turn to kill your opponent, but your opponent really couldn't do much with it or much about it, so... Eh. But... So, in place of that, today we're playing Gilded Goose, and other than that, this list is his list, card for card, from that Pro Tour. I fully expect this deck to do poorly. Um, if you'll notice with the land base, we have uh, opposing fetch lands here, Marsh Flats, Misty Rainforests, simply because Wooded Foothills and Bloodstained Mire didn't exist at that time. Uh, Treetop Village was the kill the land of choice as opposed to Raging Ravine, which I found interesting, but, you know, 
Uh, Thoughtseize Inquisition Bolt, not, nothing too fancy. Fatal Push didn't exist at that time. Uh, Dark Confidant was the original card engine of choice for Jund at the time, because obviously Round 6 didn't exist. Victim of Night was the additional removal spell. was a little bit awkward in the mirror, though, because it couldn't kill Olivia Valderans and Huntmaster of the Fells. Kitchen Finks was your 3-drop over Season Pyromancer, because obviously Season Pyro didn't exist, plus you needed to gain some life, you know, when you're flipping 4-drops off your Dark Confidants. And finally, Cyborg, Batter Skulls, which I found interesting, because that Obstinate Baylaw did exist then. Two copies of Olivia Baldaren, um, very powerful card that obviously has kind of gotten weaker over time because it doesn't have like any ETB effects or anything. But generally, if you untap with this thing in a creature mirror, it tends to get pretty ugly for the creature decks. Three copies of Slaughter Games because combo decks were a thing. Um, even though most combo decks have been neutered now, still a nice thing to have. Jun Charm is an interesting flexible card. Exiles Graveyards deals 2 damage to each creature, so it's kind of like a bad pyroclasm. Or put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature, kind of a la Abzan Charm. Second copy of Abrupt Key, two copies of Pyroclasm for any type of creature decks that were floating around. Ancient Grudges because Affinity was still a thing. And two copies of Graft Digger's Cage because no matter what, uh, <laughs> no matter what, um, what format you're playing in, there's always some type of graveyard shenanigans, so... Yeah. Yeah, boo, 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 boo. So, let's see how a Jun list from, what, almost 10 years ago does today? By the way, this is meant to be a complete meme on Jun players. This is not an update Jun list. This is a 9-year-old Jun list from back in the heyday. Other than Gilded Goose replacing Ban Deathrite Shaman. So the reason I chose Gilded Goose over some of the other things, um, like Birds of Paradise or Noble Hierarch or any of that, was Gilded Goose at least does two-thirds of what Deathrite Shaman does. It provides a mana boost while also gaining life in the mid to late game, in the food token, creating food tokens and stuff, which can be relevant against decks like Burn and Prowess which are a relatively large part of the meta probably right now. What's up, War Dog? Welcome to the memes, my friend. Welcome to the memes. I would not be surprised if this deck goes 1-4 and four or worse. <laughs> because I'm not playing any of the good cards. <laughs> Keep. Yeah, a lot of people were snowed in. We didn't get the snow, but we just got a fluck ton of ice. Like, we got like two inches of snow, and then it all became ice. I guess I should have played Treetop Village there, but I wanted to hold up the ability to have Lightning Bolt this turn if necessary. I have to take three to do it. Do I really want to do that? Actually, I can't even do that anyway, so it's kind of whatever. Hmm. It's not a terrible draw, I suppose. Unearth, Soul Scar Mage, Metamorphose, and a Fatal Push. I think we take the Unearth. Dude, this list is from nine years ago. This is meant to be a bad list.
So what am I pitching here? Blood Crypt? I feel like I'm pitching Blood Crypt. Of course they draw the fatal push. Okay. Sure. Uh, right now, I'm literally playing a meme list. Um, I'm playing a list from nine years ago, so I'm not playing either. <laughs> like, I'm legit playing Yu Yu Wants Adobe's list from nine years ago, just for shits and giggles. Other than I'm playing Gilded Goose instead of Death Ray Shaman. Uh, the version that I'll probably be playing later if I continue streaming today is just a copy and paste list from a couple days ago um, so I'm playing two Croxa and no ooze right now but I don't know I don't know what's the correct um, thing to be playing right now I think Pyroclasm is a little bit difficult against the Prowess decks simply because they have so much going on. It's a question of do I want to leave in Dark Confidant in that matchup? I think Dark Confidants and Thought Seizes are the most kind of whatever here. Like, Confidant's a fine card. Yeah, it still has Boil on it, because you never know if uh, blue decks are going to pop up or not. I didn't really change much of the lists from what was going on during the Uro Cascade nonsense. I think on the draw, I'm going to do something like this, and like one of the Batter Skulls. Maybe do that. It's 
So, like, I'm trying to get across to people, this deck is meant as a meme. Just because everyone's saying, Jun's great, Jun's great, Jun's great. It's like, well, no, no, Jun isn't great. Jun might be playable again, but that doesn't mean Jun's great. Well, it's a pretty easy take. A lot of it depends on how the meta ends up shaping up, whether Croxa versus Ooze is good. Ooze is better in creature-based mirror in creature-based metas. Croxa is a little bit better in more mid-range and those kind of nonsense mirrors. So a lot of it depends literally on how the meta shakes out. Lurus to hand. All right. Time to play a Tarmagoofin. Yeah, but the main draw for Rakdos was the fact of Rakdos allowed you to play Blood Moon. Attacking with Goy, forcing them to fatal push it, which is kind of whatever. Decay this. Play Goose. And pass the turn. Sure, I don't even need the goose right now is the funny part. Well, I really need a removal spell off the top. More a spin off of my BBE, I guess. Sure, if you want to train a mutagenic growth for this, I guess I'm okay with that. Sure. 
So the funny part is our opponent thinks that we're probably on run in six, and we're not. Probably getting bolted here, I presume. Yeah. Not quite enough green sources to do everything we want this turn, but is what it is. That's actually extremely annoying. Probably gonna have to bring in the KUs, I'm thinking. Maybe even the Jun Charm just to get rid of the graveyard. Yeah, we're going to be hard pressed to beat this this game. How is cage worded exactly? Players can't cast spells from graveyards or libraries. All right, yeah, we're def definitely bringing in cages. They're really gonna use a fatal push on a. Wow. Yeah. Plus, don't forget they still have Alurus chilling in their hand, too. Like, what would be our best top deck from here? Olivia? Maybe Olivia? Hmm.
<laughs> I should have shot the Crocs up, by the way. Uh. Yep, they drew a fatal push anyway, so none of it matters. <laughs> All right, moving on. Definitely don't want the batter skulls in against the... Uh, yeah, unfortunately, they had the fatal push, which was one of the few answers for it there. It's a John hand, so we keep it. I mean, to be fair, if we untap with that thing, it was going to be rough on them. Because we get to steal the Dreadhorde Arcanist, or if we drew another land, we get to steal the, uh, the Crocs on one go and have a 5-5 five -five Olivia. doesn't get to get the information on our hands they have to fetch their own hand what am I pitching here a bolt or a Liliana I feel like I'm pitching one of the Lilianas here really would like to draw a cage or something. Yeah, Gilded Goose. Seems legit. This was actually a death right shaman, it would be good because of Croxa, but it's not, so. Opponent pitching a Dreadhorde Arcanist, their hand must be really good. feeling I'm about to get hit by a cult. Oh, nope, Anamorphos. Okay. Could be Colagon's command. Still. Yep. Bolt, bolt, fatal push, dread order organist. I think we like our hand too much. And they can get Crocs back, which is annoying.
awkward with our mana. I should have held that Misty Rainforest in hand, because now we have no recovery mechanism against once Croxa comes back. On the other hand, I can pitch the Victim of Night and hope to spin something to kill the Croxa. Now it's decision time. Do I pitch the Victim of Night or do I pitch the Bloodbird Elf? So now the Bloodbird Elf's good as dead. So the question is, what am I likely to spend something more off of? I think we just go ahead and Victim of Night. It feels really bad, but probably shouldn't have played the fetch land. Gambled on drawing another land. See, yeah, playing Olivia here just gets it bolted. really kind of freaking sucks but they have a fatal push in hand too so it's not like we're chewing through the removal spells one way or the other anyway You know, I often laugh at the, the time differentials here, but <clears throat> we're playing two very similar style decks, and my opponent's taking like six minutes extra to make their decision. It's kind of funny. So if anyone wonders why Jun's gotten worse over the years, and I'm not saying it to be a smart aleck, but the efficiency of the threats in the format has just gotten so much better. You know, you saw there, we just played against a deck with um, all two drops effectively, other than Luris, and we just got out grinded. Like, yes, I know this isn't the optimum current tier deck uh, for Jund, but just the mana efficiency, the the power of the recently printed cards, etc., is just so much higher than the core of what makes or made Jund great. I think this hand's fine. I 
Am I about to get a... I have a feeling I'm about to get Gristle branded. Just a bad feeling. Because not too many not too many decks are willingly playing a Temple of Malice in the modern format. Let alone two of them. Yep, I have a very strange feeling I'm going to be getting uh Crystal Brandon here really shortly. <sighs> yep. Somehow I'm not surprised. Sure. Opponent gets a lot of combo because I have a lot of cards here. <laughs> So for those of you just joining us, this is a total meme on Jund. Um, I'm playing basically card for card Yu Yu Watanabe's list from Pro Tour RTR in 2012. Other than I'm playing Gilded Goose in the place of um, the band Deathrite Shaman. So far, we've gotten out, out grinded by Rakdos, uh, Dreadhold Arcanist. So, it's been our only match so far. So the problem here is the fact that we don't have a way to kill our opponent. So um, we can put our opponent to one, but they can still do the thing. How does Burgie walk into their deck? Hmm.
play Gilded Goose as a blocker. Right, I hate filter lands for this particular reason. Pass turn. Am I dead? Oh, I totally agree. It's not a one for one um, comparison. I'm not even remotely saying they are. Let's see if we get common and comboed with Fury of the Horde here. <laughs> Some of your friends have power, I take it. It's funny how people are basically porting decks from historic into modern and they're now good. Hmm. You know, I joked about a 1-4 league, but <laughs> it seems like we might be headed for that. I just wish I could play the Jeopardy theme while we wait for our opponents to make their decisions. Like do 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 <laughs> By the power of Mox Ruby. Yeah, one of my brother's um, acquaintances from Columbus is an old, old, old school magic player. And he has, I believe, multiple sets of power. Like, legit multiple sets of power, legit multiple sets, play sets of uh, original dual lands. Yeah. So. I don't know. He, d he would have no intention of selling them anyway, so it would be irrelevant. But the way he keeps his stuff normally, probably. Like, legit, the room, the dude has an entire. Oh, they played Fury of the Horror, didn't they? Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm confuzzled. 
Okay, they did play Fury of the Horde. Never mind. Alright, what do we have for this nonsense? We have Slaughter Games, which is admittedly a bit slow. We have Cages, and we have Jun Charm. So we've got some stuff. Well, it's like, but they're supposed to concede when I play these cards! Yeah, as long as you're taking to kill me, I may as well make you take the other 12 minutes to kill me. Oh my god, he's making me kill him. Did you have fun? I know I had fun. I think I miss this sh even less than I miss uh, ca the Cascading Valkyries. Bring those in, bring those in, bring these in. Those are kind of whatever. Okay, so it still kills demons. Cool. Lightning bolts do things, kind of. Probably don't want Liliana's just out of principle. So why would I not want Liliana? Because I really don't want my opponent to have a free discard spell. Oh, you're helping me discard my Gristle Brand. Yay! Mm. Grudges. Is there anything they could have with grudges that I would care about? Only dumb thing I could do remotely think that they would have would be Witchbane Orb, and that would be until turn four, but at that point I wouldn't care. Pyroclasm doesn't do nothing. Abrupt Decay kills Burgi, I guess. Um, Olivia doesn't do much. Batter Skull is way too slow for the style of matchup, and we just illustrated why we don't want Liliana. Um, maybe trim a bolt, get us down to 60. I mean, the sand's gonna have to be good enough, I suppose, because without mulliganing to. Of course they would have that. Because what kind of janky combo deck doesn't have Leyline of Sanctity in it? Guess I should have mulliganed the cage. Also makes Jun, tar Jun Charm significantly worse too.
opponent's really kind of testing my patience with how slow they're playing. Like legit, you're either lava axing something or you're not doing anything this turn, so hit auto pass. Or pass until end of turn, whatever you're doing. Why would you wait until after I draw a card off of it? Oh my lord. People in their sequencing really need some updating. Alright, that allows me to put a clock in play without taking down my mana here sure you okay Are you flipping kidding me? They brought in Thoughtseize too? They're either goes Victim of Night or Bloodbraid Elf. Yep. Opponent obviously thinks they're the control deck. Being really loose with my fetching there, I should have gotten a forest because there's a decent chance our opponent brought in something like blood moons too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> sure. Hey War Dog, next time I get the idea to play like a meme like this, just verbal uh, virtually slap me upside the head. <laughs> just virtually slap me upside the bloody head. Because this was among the dumbest ideas I've had in a while. Like, I think this might be dumber than Demir Vern. People out there breaking the meta and I'm here playing a meme from 2012. <laughs> I'm going to I guess I should, before I, like, go talking crap with the... Oh, today's day and age deck wouldn't have been any better off. Shocker. Okay. 
Because they're not playing Maelstrom Pulses or just outside of Tier 1. Yeah. I think it's Lucarian still loves that deck. Somebody in the Burn, Burn Discord brings it up every once in a while. I'm like, you guys know that was a complete meme, right? Like, the fact that it almost killed someone on turn 4 other than Vela Summer was just dumb luck. Sure. Okay, I don't know why you're doing anything on your second main phase here. Am I getting Fury of the Hoarded into another... Or through the breached into another, like, Emrakul or something? So, so far, I'm plus 16 minutes on game clock this league. Okay, Desperate Ritual. Into Through the Breach. Sure. Yep. Sure. Hmm, this is one deck I didn't miss being gone from the format. <sighs> this is one deck I did not miss being gone from the format. Oh no, I'm not saying it's not fun to play Demir Burn, but at least with that, I went into tournament practice rooms and was actively screwing around. This is just like watching friggin' paint dry. Like, I don't think it would be so bad if my opponents were, like, playing quickly. But, but just the fact that they're taking, like, so bloody long to make play lines that shouldn't be that difficult. Yeah, I think that's I think it's Lucarian also has that in his deck too. Um So all joking aside, um obviously Death Rate Shaman would have been better in that matchup. You know, it would have given us another piece of graveyard interaction that's not dependent on our opponent having not having Leyline of Sanctity in their hand. Um Looking at even the modern Jun lists, though, none of them are playing anything that would have answered Leyline. Like, Abrupt Decays, none of this nonsense answers Leyline. Um, so we would have been cold to Leyline even with modern Jund, or at least the build that I pulled up. So, I know Teferi was a huge proponent of uh, Assassin's Trophy. I can't say I disagree with him that some number are... Okay, sure. Get a Blood Crypt into Bob here. Oh no, we can't get Blood Crypt, so we gotta get Stomping Ground here. Oh, we gotta get Overground Tomb. Alright, so no red mana for us. See, kids, back in 2012, Jun players actually had to make decisions. Um. <laughs> well. I mean. We're kind of screwed if they draw a white source. So I think we take the Noble Hierarch. <laughs> That's a that's a bold keep, Cotton. That's a bold keep. <laughs> I mean, I, I I like the opponent's size of their of their cojones in in a, in a 
Burn and Prowess meta. I mean, yeah, yeah, good for them. They drew the white source. Cool. I still can't get a red source. Uh, yes. So I guess we Liliana here, pitch a treetop village. Interestingly enough, they pitched the other path, sure. Man, it's no blood. All right, fair enough. Wow, opponents just been ripping land after land after land. So I'm curious what they skyclave here. I guess they have to skyclave the Liliana? They go after Dark Confidant. That's interesting. So we get a 2 2 back. I think we just fire up Treetop Village here. Punch in as much damage as we can before they can really do anything notable. Before that sword becomes a factor. Sure. Play the sword. Sure. Five, seven, ten. I could put them to one, but that's not the best of resources. I think I'm going to swing seven first, and then just play Liliana and Goose. No, I didn't want to activate that. I want to do this. You sack a dude. Pretty sure we got this regardless here. It was a pretty good series of draws. I have to give my opponent credit there. See what Bloodbraid Elf number one hits. Do I bring in some number of ancient grudges? I feel like I want to at least bring in one. What cards are actually not good here? Probably at least the first Liliana isn't good. Like, this is the Jun problem, right? Like, some of our... We almost have too much for a matchup like this.
Like, I'm fine with seeing the first discard spell, but beyond that, we probably don't want to see a discard spell. Sand's awkward, because we can't play Goose on one, but we could still go, like, Bolt, Goose, or Dark Confidant on two. So, yeah, I think I'm fine with the Sand. Just get the Bolt, the Noble Hierarch. It's possible they kept a greedy hand like they did last game. Apparently not. Okay, so probably getting Hallowed Fountain here. Stone Forge for Batter Skull or for... Okay. So... Hang that we are. Let's see if we get something like a spell queller here. Yep. Unsurprisingly. Alright, so I hope you never draw lands, pretty much. Immediately draw land, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Seems about right. Surprised they didn't try for a, uh, whatchamacallit there. Spellqueller. I mean, I guess we at least get to take the batter skull. So I should be happy ish. <clears throat> sure. Take five and like it. Why would you swing with your giver of runes? Seems like a terrible decision. So you're not going to give it pro green? Okay. Dark Confidant.
So I should have main phased it. Once again, should have brought in Groff Digger's cages. Maybe I'm supposed to bring in Batter Skulls because they're nonsense. Liana honestly seems less and less effective in these matchups just because of all the random smattering of dorks they have. Yeah, sure, keep. Wow, that's a that's a brave hand. drawing pretty well. I guess Coco was kind of whatever with Cajun play. Though they could grab, could, the way they're drawn, they could easily draw Skyclave Apparition into it, so. Jun doing Jun things. Position seems like a reasonable card. They have all lands. We finally got a match win. <laughs> we'll be back in one second. Uh. <clears throat> So how's everyone doing this morning? 
Hope all is well for everybody. Playing a bit of a weird league, as I mentioned a couple of times. Uh, this is a Jun list from 2012, other than Gilded Goose has replaced the band Death Rate Shaman. Uh, Death Rate Shaman was a very powerful card, obviously. Um, obviously, this hands a mulligan. I guess this hands a keep, although it's not particularly good. Um, like if this were Death Rate Shaman, it would be significantly better, but. Thoughts so thought seasoned goif go. Back with, mm, Twilight Mire, I guess. Can I even get a black source here? Yeah. Guess we go with this and hope we don't need to play a red card. Okay, reaction. <laughs> well, do I take the card that beats our entire deck or do I take something else? Because, like, they're going to have a fluck ton of mana. So I think I just take Oriok Champion. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Sure. Position you. Oh, look, another Oriok champion. Goose, go. <laughs> Thought sees bug. Mm, it's Conclave Mentor. Yeah, whatever. So, mana efficient play is to play Kitchen Finks. Party like it's 1999. Heliod. Of course you have Heliod, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says Jun quite like drawing your Thoughtsies after your opponent top decks their powerful threat. <laughs> It's got to have nothing in hand, right? It's maybe a land. Could be a ballista. Nope, it's a land. Go figure. Gonna give themselves a four four. Sure. Hmm. And you need a 
kill spell, a kill spell, a kill spell, we need a kill spell. And you draw a land. most played in our deck is lightning bolts which is completely useless Sure. Which one do you get rid of? The Tarmogoy for the kitchen things. Okay. Who's the tempo deck now? <laughs> well, I guess they are. They are a collected company deck, so Cage comes in. Liana's effectiveness is questionable in this style of matchup. <sighs> Kitchen Thinks is also kind of whatever. Like, obviously their backup plan is just a bad beatdown plan. If we draw removal spells, we're great. If we don't, we die. I mean, thanks doesn't necessarily help against that particular plan. Um, Maybe one or two Liliana's in. Down something like that. Sounds great, except we don't have lands. The sand's questionable, but I do think we keep it. Question is, do I one for one a mana dork here? I guess I play a Dark Confidant, encourage them to play like a Skyclave Apparition or something. I think that's exactly what's about to happen. I think I just take my two for one and like it here. Yeah, the worst thing they can do here is play Heliod, which obviously is not fantastic for us. Ranger Captain's like annoying, but I don't know that it's backbreaking here.
A lot of it depends on if they have another uh, Skyclave Apparition or Path to Exile. Opponent's probably reading Olivia Voldaren because they've never seen the card because it's just like not relevant to today's modern meta. Yep, yep, yep. Sure, two two ballista. Fortunately, I gotta abrupt K this before they can untap, or we're in a lot of trouble. It's kind of annoying because my treetop village actually kept me from blowing them out with abrupt K, which is kind of irony. Yep. Oh, that was, yeah, that, that's perfect. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Not that I think we were winning this game anyway, but, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> Had Skyclave Apparition in their hand and didn't play it to kill Eliana. Okay. Spike feeder? Sure. Not that I'm worried about the infinite life, but the infinite life plus the Skyclave Mentor means they have infinite power, so we're dead. Seems about right. Basically, they do the infinite life loop, and then every other loop they get to power something up. So we're dead. So even my punt there at the end didn't matter. We're up against the merfolk god, so I wonder what they're on. K 
Can't cast half the spells in her hand. Still think Inquisition to Liliana is alright, so we'll keep it. Okay, so the Merfolk Gods on Tron. Okay. You know, I was joking about the 1-4, but I think we've successfully found the 1-4. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. The problem with slaughter games is they just have so many threats we can't answer. Abrupt K is only really good against Oblivion Stone. Bolts are almost a joke in this matchup. Problem is, without any kind of uh, land disruption, this matchup is completely impossible. Um. I guess we go with this hand. Like, we can try for hand disruption, but their deck's so kind of resilient to things, it really doesn't matter anyway. So we're not going to be able to stop them on threats, so I think we have to stop them on trying to assemble Tron. Which, like I said, is a bit of a pipe dream with what their deck does, but... Say, you mean you didn't draw Tron off the top? What kind of Tron player are you? Slaughter games, you say? Fortunately, that's not one that can take Tron out of their deck, so... I don't think they have anything in their hand that they wouldn't have cast already, but... 
Well, that's Inquisition. See what's going on. Okay, so we're probably going to have to slaughter games next turn, which is fine. This turn, we're just going to fire up the old treetop village. They're not Tron next turn, regardless of what they do. Land. Untap land, please. So that's lethal, correct? Basic forest. Fire up both treetops. Get you dead. the goose because why not oh what prayer do we have on the draw is there any adjustments I can make on the draw that change things I mean theoretically batter skull gets around Ugin but that's kind of really corner case Olivia is too slow. Bolts aren't really a thing. Cage does nothing. Erupt K only kills O Stone. If they even run O Stone anymore, I know a lot of lists were going to All His Dust prior to the Ugin and Tybalt shenanigans. So we click submit. Uh, thought sees into a bunch of uncastables. We got a mulligan this one. Well, I mean, we have castable cards, but no relevant disruption. So, mulligan? Once again, terrible mana into no disruption, so going to four. I mean, sure, I guess. They keep a one lander. Alrighty. Go, my dark confidants. Sure, you're not trying on four. Shocker. <laughs> Which one of Tron's win cons would you like to lose to? <clears throat> well, I 
So next turn they'll have access to 10 mana so they can play Ironically, I think Karn's the least of these, but also the one we can't answer the most. So, kind of encourage them to play Ostone, perhaps? Maybe they'll get sloppy and play Worm Coil instead. This is one of those games where you got to give your opponent the opportunity to screw up. All right, and they chose the opportunity to screw up line. Sure. <clears throat> um. allows us to use our mana the best this turn and start fogging worm coil engine at a later point. Yeah, it allows them to use stirrings, which is unfortunate. Yeah, we can't be doing Mog. I mean, we at least set ourselves up with the best chance to win there. So... All memeing aside, and to be honest, this this was meant as a meme. Um, our first match, I'm not really sure that even traditional Jund or today's Jund would have fared much better against that Rakdos. Um, grinding, uh, whatchamacallit deck. Um, maybe it would have fared a little bit better. You know, there were some play decisions like not bringing in Graf Digger's Cage in Game 2, which could have hurt. Um, just some little things, you know, even with the build that we did have. But I think that really illustrated one of Jun's problems in today's meta. <clears throat> like, there are decks like Rakdos Death Shadow, Rakdos Arcanus that we were playing against. Um, even Heliod Company to a certain, de certain, certain extent that, like, Jun's thing was always one for one, one for one, one for one, and doing it at an efficient clip. Well, it's kind of hard to one for one when your um, opponents can actually outgrind you. And then the Graf, the Groyo's Vengeance Fury of the Horde nonsense, um... You know, unless the Jun deck was packing an answer to Leyline of Sanctity, they would have lost game one and game two anyway. What was match number three? Um, was that Heliod Company? No, that was the Bant Stone Blade list. Then we lost to Heliod Company, and then we lost to Tron. Um, Heliod Company feels like a weird one. Uh, you know, the Skyclaves and stuff allow them to answer most of the hate cards that will be brought in against them. That feels like it's a legit deck. And then Tron, well, Tron's going to Tron against Jun, you know. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I built, or I literally played this list just as a troll. Um, but it also reminded me of why I don't like playing Jun in today's meta at all. Even though, like, clearly this is not up-to-date Jund. But, like, you know, does changing some cards... Uh, to this really change the matchups we just ran into? So... Does any of this change the Heliod matchup? Um, we have a little bit more efficient removal, but we're still trying to do the same thing. Uh, our Tron matchup gets better with the Damping Spheres and the Fulminators. The Heliod and Rakdos matchups actually might get a little bit worse. Like, yeah, we have, like, Bomb to bring in, Vraska to bring in, um, maybe Collective Brutalities against Arcanist, and then against Heliod, we don't have a whole lot to bring in either. Yeah, like obviously the matchups could have played out differently. We could have gotten a different set of matches if we won like the first match or whatever. But I still think the core problem of Jund remains. Jund is less efficient and doesn't outgrind people anymore. Which... When you have a deck with a bunch of one-for-ones, even two-for-ones, and you're still getting outground by the other mid-range decks, feels really bad. Just feels really bad. Like, I know Ren and Six, like, undoes some of that, but... I don't know. Doesn't feel like the core of Jun has changed all that much. And obviously, you know, these would be Deathrite Shamans and it'd be a little bit better, but I'm not even sure 2012 Jun would be good right now. Like, the Slaughter Games would have helped against... Uh, Slaughter Games would have helped against um, Gristlebrand. What do you, you missed the jokingly predicted one for from happening, Mordog? <laughs> we ran into Tron Heliod Company on the back end. So, those of you just tuning in or whatever, as I noticed, a little bit of a spike in viewership here. I literally played a troll jump list. This was Yuya Watanabe's second place list from Pro Tour RTR, other than Gilded Goose replaced a Deathrite Shaman. So, I did it as a troll. So this is not an updated jump list. Um, so, that said, I still think a lot of the general feelings I got from this list still translate to, to current Jund, in that a lot of the lists have just passed Jund by. I'm playing a one-for-one -one Jund list, yes, without Fatal Push, but still lost to two creature decks. Like, I'm not even getting beat by blue decks. I lost to creature decks. I lost to Helia Company, and I lost to... Uh, Rakdos Arcanist. One in four. It was a complete troll job. Um, but a lot of the matchups are a fair representation of what you're going to see in the meta right now. And I still think the general feeling about the matchups kind of remains, even if you switch, switch out, you know, Ren for Dark Confidant, Croxa for Finx, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, we still got outground by Rakdos Arcanist, and we still got outground by um, Heliod Company. So that fact, I don't think, would have changed by switching to the modern build. Um, the Tron thing, you know, Tron's just a bad matchup, even with the sideboard of the more modern Junlists with, like, 
damping spheres and uh, fulminators or pillages, whatever your preferred LD spell is. That might have improved the matchup, but I don't know that we'd win. Like I said, it this was this list was designed as a troll, but a lot of the the feelings remain and that if you're if the core of the meta is gonna be like Rakdos Death Shadow, Heliod Company, Burn, you know, Tron coming back into the meta a little bit, potentially, I still don't think Jun's well positioned. Well to be fair, we didn't play any matchups where Bob would have hurt us. Um, we didn't play against Burn. We didn't play against Prowess. So the life total Bob was draining for us actually didn't matter. And actually was actively helping us in the Tron matchup. So, Confidant versus Ren. I think in this league it was irrelevant other than the fact that Confidant died to Fatal Push and Ren wouldn't. But Ren would also be attacked down by the creatures that I couldn't kill because I wasn't drawing extra cards. So, eh. You know, Dark Confidant versus Ren was a bit of a push. Gilded Goose didn't do its thing. We very rarely had it on turn one. Um, you know, so we weren't really to re able to leverage like a turn two Liliana or turn three Bloodbraid Elf all that much. So that was kind of a wash, even though obviously it's not Deathrite Shaman, which the original list ran Deathrite Shaman. Um, well, I'm not saying Jun can't compete. I'm just simply saying that Jun, it honestly, even with the tools it's gotten with Run and Six, Season Pyromancer, Bloodbraid Elf back, the fundamental problem is the core of your deck. Yeah, pretty much. Well, actually, I think this deck was around before Siege Rhino. Because, was it before? Because remember, Siege Rhino got played after Blood, because they originally blood, banned Bloodbraid Elf, thinking Bloodbraid Elf was the problem. And then the Ajundi decks put. Uh, popped up with uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny Vengeance, I think it was. And then people realized that Death Right Shaman. No, actually, I didn't. I really didn't look for updated Jun lists yet. Um, and like I said, there are good Jun pilots out there. Reed Duke, Boss. Um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, Something Jun, uh, there's a Jun player that I follow. What is his name? I think it's Sexy Jun or something. He he plays it a little bit more seriously. Um, obviously, uh, Reed Duke's cousin, who I can never remember his name, also wins a lot with Jun. Like, I'm not saying Jun can't be improved, and I haven't looked at Greatness at any cost website to see if they've updated the version, or I don't think I've seen any release Jun lists from, uh, yeah, Logan Nettles, thanks, Blitz. Um, I haven't seen any release lists from Grimm either, and like I said, I'm not a mid-range player at heart, so I'm not going to take time to work on a ton of Jun, it's not my cup of tea. I'm more of an aggro player. <laughs> Well, where do you think Duke learned to play it? Logan actually plays more Jun than Reed does. I'm not sure who taught who how to play the deck, but I know Logan plays it more than Reed does these days. Of course, Reed also has to play a bunch of different formats too. And I know Logan was working more on Pioneer, so he was a big proponent of uh, Sultai, Shard, uh, not Shardless, uh, Sultai Delirium and Pioneer for a good bit. Which effectively is a similar deck to Jund and what it was trying to do. Um, and like I said, I'm not saying you can't find a good Jund list in the format. And I'm not saying Jund can't be a solid tier 2 deck. 
But the problem is, if you can't even outgrind the other creature decks, the blue decks being removed from the format and the Tybalt's be decks being removed from the format doesn't matter. Like, you can tune yourself to beat creature decks, but if you're still losing the creature decks, not good. Especially when that's, like, what your entire deck is built around. Tikkun, do you have bosses, an, a link to bosses, latest list? Oh, yeah, I'm not arguing. Like, they're all better Jun players than I will ever be. Like... I play Jun as Burn Core, let me dig. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm going to ever be a great Jun player. That said, I don't think Jun has that many thought lines to it. Like, honestly, after having played a lot of the valky and blue decks coming back to jun jun's pretty simplistic as to what it does you know it's thought season inquisition try to poke a hole in your hand and then try to play your game plan around that you know whether that be taking an opponent's removal spell whether that be taking an opponent's you know ramp spell trying to color screw them you know and hoping they don't rip you know that that's always been Jun's forte is to try to try to force a top deck battle and hope you win the top deck battle. Problem is, a lot of times Jun just doesn't win the top deck battles anymore. Oh, I agree. Magic is difficult as a whole, but I would say Jun's difficulty level is significantly lower than something like oh, I don't know, blue control right now, or an inexperienced player trying to play Storm or Amulet Titan. You know, I would say Jun's, like, only a little bit above Burn in difficulty right now. So... No Liliana's. That's very telling. I'm not saying I disagree with that sentiment either. I mean, there are definitely some John players that would argue with this list just on the basis of four magmatic channeler. But you know, this does improve the efficiency of the deck. I'm not gonna argue that point. Bone Crusher Giant seems to be fine in the current meta. It's another two for one. Yeah, I can't really argue with the changes. I mean, other than, you know... As you saw in that league, Liliana wasn't particularly good in any spot. Not a terrible list to start from. Like I said, the only thing I would see people really arguing about is the inclusion of Bone Crusher Giant other than Liliana... And no BBEs, but I don't know the BBEs that good in the current meta anyway. Well, this seems fine. I mean, it's not like super exciting, but then again, Jun's very rarely ever super exciting. Um. Well, I'm not, see, I'm not arguing on the basis of decks played at their most proficient. I'm just arguing at the, picking up the general play patterns and mulligan patterns of a deck. Um, Burn and Jund both don't have a huge barrier to entry for, um, learning to play the basics of the deck they have a higher barrier to entry for learning to play the deck really well like I know a lot of Jun players probably aren't going to want to hear me basically say that Jun and Burn are equivalent skill levels but they're not far off like it's 
both decks are largely about maximizing your car maximizing your mulligans maximizing your efficiency with your mana per turn and maneuvering the game in such a way that you a couple keep top decks win you the game you know they they both do something effectively a little bit differently but both decks try to push your opponent to the point where the game is maneuvered in such a way that they only have X number of cards to draw to, and if they don't draw those cards, they're dead. Well, here's the thing. I understand as a player, I am I am better at analyzing the overall like meta and the overall decks than I am at, at technical play. Like, my weakness, one of the weaknesses in my game is technical play. I do a lot of punts, I make a lot of errors, you know. I get good with more repetition, 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 repetition. Some people are really good at picking up a deck, playing it technically beautifully, but they suck at analyzing the meta. Or they, they get locked in on their deck choice, and, you know, they play that deck proficiently, wonderfully, but if that deck isn't well positioned or they can't maneuver around a couple of matchups, they're screwed. You know, everybody has their, their weaknesses and a lot of it just comes down to knowing what your weaknesses are. Like, I know as a commentator, I'm not the most entertaining. You know, I'm very matter of fact and very analytical. I have a little bit of sarcasm and humor, but like, I'm not a truly engaging personality. Like, my strength is trying to analyze, trying to point out what's going on. Um, you know, my strength is not, hey, I'm going to entertain you for six hours of, like, dramatic, like, Nikachu or whatnot. So, you know, in the end, as a player, you have to play to your strengths. As a deck, you have to play to your strengths. So, Jun, I'm not saying Jun doesn't fit my skill set. But if I'm going to play a Thoughtseize Inquisition deck, it's going to be GDS, or it's going to be Rakdos Shadow. It's not going to be Jund. You know, I have I much enjoy the play patterns of GDS or Rakdos Shadow more than I do this one. Those decks are both a little bit more aggressively bent, or have a little bit different play patterns to them. Um, Jund, I honestly find Jund boring. Especially when my opponent takes forever to make their decisions like I, I was joking in the first couple of matches but i was plus 16 minutes on my first two opponents on time clock now i understand the gristle brand fury of the horde deck has a lot of clicking you got to go through a lot of cards that takes some time i'm not i'm not arguing that but i shouldn't be plus 16 minutes against another mid-range deck and a not very uh, skill intensive combo deck. Well, I I agree, but even like if you go back and look at some of my videos, um, well, yeah, I I agree there. Like if you go back and look at some of my videos, even with like four color Omnath and stuff, how many times was I up on time on my opponents? And I'm playing the slow control deck. Like, I for so many good streamers, good players, not named Gabrielle Nassif, talk about, I think, I think Spike especially talks about, um, talks about making decisions while you're, it's your opponent's turn, making your decisions while it's your opponent's time. So many players just wait to make decisions during their time, and it's so stupid. You gotta play to your strengths, but you also have to improve your weaknesses. You can't just let yourself have the same weaknesses over time. Like I would say, I'm a better Magic player than I am than I was three years ago, but I'm having worse results. Whether people are just whether the skill of Magic overall is just getting better, I'm playing the wrong decks at the wrong times, etc. I'm pretty like. I had a bad run the second half of 2020. 
The only good run I've had lately was the last two weeks when I was playing Four Color Omnath, Jun Cascade, and Blue Cascade. Whether that was, you know, because Burn wasn't well positioned, I was just picking poor decks. Um, you know, so I had that nice little run there, and then, you know, last two leagues obviously haven't been great, but... I knew that I knew going in this league was going to be a train wreck because I was playing this deck to prove a point. And while I could have played a more Jun, more recent Jun deck and probably proved the same point, I just wanted to point out that the heyday of the Jun deck is gone. Like if these were Deathrite shamans, I still think that this league would have been terrible. Anyways, thanks everybody for listening to my rants. Um, well, and that's part of it, War Dog. Like, how much of it is... How much of my performance of the last end of 2020 was because I was choosing bad decks? Because I was... not I shouldn't say bad decks. Poorly positioned decks. I wasn't playing... Uh, like, I wasn't playing Prowess at the right time, or I wasn't playing Burn at the right time, or I wasn't... You know, I mean, some of it's matchups. You know, variance happens. I'm not going to sit there and talk about that, but, like, you know, I wasn't playing a bunch of four-color Omnath. I wasn't playing Heliod Company. I wasn't playing Hammer Time when they were good, etc., etc. <laughs> like, 4-1. <four> <laughs> and, and, you know, to be fair to this deck, with a few other, like, twists and turns, we could have been 2-3 three or 3-2. Three, you know, if our opponent doesn't have ley line in, in game two, we could have won game two, and then who knows what happens game three against Grishel, or Fury of the Horde, Grishel Brand. Um, you know, if our Tron opponent didn't top deck exactly Ulamog or Ugin, we have a shot with those bobs and chump blocking the worm coil engine and then swinging back and then hoping to draw more. <laughs> Well, to be fair, you might see Miracles make a little bit of a comeback because I know Spike was having some success with it before the Tybalt nonsense. Like, at points, he switches decks so often, it's kind of hard to gauge. But I know he was having some success with it, and I know Harry was having some success with Miracles. But, and that might end up being one of the blue decks you see come back. It's kind of hard to say with where blue decks are going to go. I'm not even going to touch blue decks until I've worked through a good bit of... Well, okay, let me put a proviso on that. I'm not going to touch blue control decks until the format gets a little bit more settled. You might see me pick up Spirits or GDS, which are technically blue decks. Or you might see me play a Delver deck, which is technically a blue deck. But blue control, no, 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 <laughs> no. Well, no... Just because you don't want to support the broken decks doesn't mean... Oh, yeah, that that's true. But just because you don't want to support the broken decks doesn't mean that if you don't want to win consistently, you don't have to play the broken decks. <laughs> that's the problem with Magic these days, is if you want to win, sometimes you got to play the broken crap. So... Anywho... I want to thank you all for hanging out this morning. I was thinking about playing the traditional Jun list this morning... But after that pasting, I don't know that I can put myself through another another round of Jund. <laughs> so, this is going to be a really rambly video on YouTube, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, War Dog. Hope you all have a great day. I'll probably be, I'll either be back tonight or tomorrow morning, one of the two. So, I don't know what I'm playing yet. I was thinking about playing another Jund League, but I don't know that I could stomach another Jund League. <laughs> so, thanks everybody for hanging out. This has been John for MTG Nexus. Hope you all have a great day.